Hello, welcome back to Going Walkabout. By the time you're watching this video, I'll be in Scotland testing the app. It's going to be the final test before I can go into deployment. And I want to run the test on a production ready environment. So in this episode, I'm going to explain what I did to make sure that my app and the backend all runs properly on two environments, a test environment and a production environment. Before I dive into the different environments, I first need to explain a little bit what are the different components that I'm using. I do have an iOS client that you've seen most of the time that needs to connect to the correct Firestore and to the connect backend. I have a backend that is hosted on Google App Engine and that backend also connects to Firestore. So it needs to deal with different environments. Also, what you've seen from the previous episode, I use a lot of cloud functions. Firestore triggers that update the database. Now those Firestore functions, they also need to be able to connect to the correct environment. And lastly, I do have a website that you have seen a few times as well. For instance, for changing password and verifying your email it is used. And that website is built in Vue, but also connects to Firestore. So all in all, I have four different environments that all need to connect to two different environments. Now going into the environments, I first needed to create a new Firestore project because that's the way Firestore works. You create a project for test and you create a project for production. So that's what I did. Now, then for each different environment, we go into the results. So let's first go and have a look at Xcode where I show you how I did it in the iOS client. Here in the configuration, you see the different P lists I'm using, one for production and one for test. Those P lists contain the information about the Firestore environment to connect to. And then I need to load the correct one. But I made it a little bit more complicated for myself because I also want to be able to connect my client to a locally running backend and still connecting to the correct Firestore database. So I have a few more parameters to deal with. I also need to have a base URL where my environment is running so that I can also run my client against a local environment while testing and connecting to a different data store. In this particular file for the environment, I decide which P list to be used. And then in the app delegate, I load the correct plist. Now there's various ways of doing this in iOS. This is the easy way, but it has a few drawbacks, especially if you use some advertisement components from Firebase. I'm not using them. I'm not planning on using them. So for now, this method will work and I have seen it is working correctly. Now iOS was actually quite simple. So that's a small step to be taken. I had a little bit more work on my backend environment. So let's switch to uh, Visual Studio Code and do the whole App Engine story and look at that. Here you see my App Engine project with the default and I have my, um, my main here, what initializes the app. And it uses credentials, the database URL and the storage URL from a configuration file that I included here. Now that configuration file contains information about the different environments. If I go into that configuration file, that I uh, find here. I have an environment, a runtime environment, what is identifying what is actually my connection point. This environment, when running locally, it's empty. So I manually need to set an environment. When it is running in production or when it is running hosted at Google, it will give you information about your project, your storage bucket, etc. And I use that information at runtime to determine how to connect. In a production environment, you can connect with application defaults, but when you're running a local environment and want to connect to your storage in the cloud, you need to set specific uh, admin credentials to do that. And that is all what I did here. And based on that information, it is really easy. I just need to connect or I just need to upload the correct environment. But it is a little bit of work to set up. From App Engine, we move on to the cloud functions. Now, let's go into the cloud function that we saw the previous time when we create a trip, for instance. And um, no, more important, here in the index, we just use the default initialization of cloud functions, and that should be enough because the cloud functions, they know which environment they're running and they connect to the correct environment. 
and that is all working fine. Except when your cloud function is also using uh, cloud storage. And I'll show you that here in a, a delete of the post, where I have a function that deletes some media, and I need to have the bucket from where I can delete media. Now, what I have to do here is retrieve the environment that you also saw in our backend. It is the same environment in our functions to get the configuration. And from the configuration, I can get the storage bucket. So if I upload the same function to environment one or environment two, this way I can also retrieve what is the default storage bucket. So that is also very simple. And then I can use that bucket anywhere where I need to go to cloud storage. So also fairly simple. Now onto the website. Let's go to the website. And if we go to the website, we actually see here in the main that I have some Firebase configuration that I use here in the initialization of my app. And this file is a file that de describes the Firebase environment that you're currently using. And in order to make it very easy to switch between environments, I built a little bit of a uh, build script that I'll show you that enables me to retrieve the this file or this uh, Firebase configuration from the cloud service. So I will go into my uh, build script. If I get the build script, it is actually um, using the Firebase client tool to retrieve the web setup and it retrieves it as a JSON for a particular project and it exports it into that Firebase configuration file that I include when I'm running the website and uh, it saves it that way. Then it will build the website and when the website is being built it will include that file and the result is suitable for that particular environment. The building of the website will put the files on a place where App Engine will host it from and I all need to do is to deploy uh, the App Engine project, enable to run that. And this way, with the simple deploy script, I can very quickly say, you know, deploy my test or deploy my production environment. And because all the time I re-download that particular file and it is very simple to do that. So the web then will also connect to the correct environment because that is in this Firebase configuration file that uh, for the test environment is here and for the production environment will then be different and uh, be used here in initialization of the app. So all in all, there's four environments I needed to deal with. Each of them is not very difficult, but to make sure that all four work correctly and that it is complete is still quite a bit of work. But I'm very happy that it's all done and it's all working. Hello, it's me. Editing out. Sorry for the interruption, but when I was editing this video, I noticed it was not complete. Because if you have a test environment and a production environment, you want to be sure that they're both the same. So that also applies for your Firestore security rules and your Firestore indexes. And I didn't mention them. So let's go and have a look how I have to deal with that. If I go here to the console, you can go to your security rules and if you want, you can maintain the security roles in the console. Now, if you do that, you first need to export that. So these are your latest security rules. You can uh, copy paste this and move it to a file that is part of your Firebase project. And then you can deploy it into another database. So let's go to Fire, um, Visual Studio Code. Here we have that uh, Firebase project and we have the Firestore rules file. And this file is actually the same as the file you see in the console. So make sure that everything you have in the console is what you're currently running, gets exported or copied into this file so that you can later deploy that. For the indexes, it's the same, but a little bit of a different procedure. So look, let's look at that procedure as well. In the console, we have our index definitions and they're not, they're visual. Yeah, we also have a single field exceptions maybe, but nowhere I can find some kind of file defining the indexes. So for that, you need to download that file. When you actually set up your Firebase project, you initially got that file, but that might be out of date because you might have created some additional indexes. So you first need to retrieve the latest version of your indexes, and then you can deploy them to your other environment. 
So let's go to Visual Studio Code again. Now here we can go in the Firebase console and we can say Firebase Firestore indexes and this will download here in a file, if I make this a little bit bigger you can see it a little bit better, the definition of all your indexes. So you have to copy this all the way like this, copy and then go to Visual Studio Code again where you can then paste it into this Firestore indexes file and now you have the latest definition here in your uh, Firestore indexes file and then with the simple deploy command you can choose to deploy these indexes to your production environment with Firebase deploy it will deploy everything your security rules your indexes and your functions but you can also choose to selectively only deploy parts of it now I found it important that you also know that these security rules and indexes are important. So sorry for the interruption. Now back to the main program where we continue. And very soon I will launch the production website. And of course I'll show you the app running against production. Because on the Scotland trip I want to run against this production environment. Because it's the last step before going into production and actually getting the app deployed in the app store. What is also a very exciting time and yes some future videos will be focusing on what I still need to do to make sure that I get it approved and running in the App Store. I hope you like this video. If you like it please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video subscribe anyway because the better, next one might be better for you. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.